Hey everybody, what goes on? And welcome to Disavowed Action Figures, bringing you episode two of X-Files. That's right, we're our second week of going back and re-watching X-Men, the animated series. I was so pumped to start doing this last week. Thank you again to the great Art G who joined me to go through that first episode, the premiere episode, if you will, of season one. Again, we are doing this in appreciation and expectations and anticipation of X-Men 97 coming out I think in about a year or so. They might have pushed it back a little bit. Gives us more time to get through these episodes. Uh, if you're new and you're watching this live, uh, if you're here hanging out like you usually do, uh, or if you're just hanging out uh, and you didn't see last week's episode, uh, we were literally trying to and, and do this with you, you know, as the audience. We're going through episode by episode through season one of X-Men, the animated series. Uh, we talk about it here on the show. We go through clip by clip, screen grab by screen grab, every week having a very special guest here on the show with us this week is no different we have a pillar in the toy community somebody whose opinion i really respect somebody we really enjoy talking to usually on friday nights this week he is joining me for the first time on a wednesday evening live and that is the man the myth the legend himself dark joker as in dante what's going on dante Hey, what's going on? Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, a pillar, man. Are, are we really gonna start that not the that nonsense? Look, I'm MJF, baby. <laughs> we need to get you a scarf. You need a scarf, then, man. <laughs> I'm totally getting you a scarf for, for for one of the holidays this year. Right? Something we're getting you a scarf for your birthday or something. Oh man, you get an MJF. Uh, I, scarf, I, got a, I got a while till your birthday comes around again. I guess so. Uh, get it, give me a ring too. Give me. I'm gonna give me a print, 3D print me a ring, like. <laughs> Our good friend Six Packs and Nick Nacks is actually in Baltimore, as you're aware, at the AW live show tonight. So if he's watching out there in the parking lot, have fun, sir, and drink responsibly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so Dante, um, before we get into this week's episode, um, what I'd like to do is, is just kind of give the guests on the show an opportunity to kind of just briefly talk about X-Men, the animated series in general um you know what it means to you what it meant to you as a kid just just basically it, it hits so many of us in so many different ways um that i'm just curious you know what what does this show mean to you what did it mean to you when you were a kid as well um shoot i get it was like that was my saturday morning cartoon uh getting up early like early saturday morning to watch it watch all the good stuff and then it was like Oh man, here comes Spider Man and the X Men coming on. Like, oh man, here we go. Um, it was great because I really didn't know about X Men um, before the show. Like, I should say, before the show came on, I only kind of knew of them uh, when the big Jim Lee cover came out. Uh, other than that, it was like I kind of just drifted into X Men territory at that point, and then. I started learning all like the regular mutants name, like who the X Men were, like all their names. I was like, okay, and then start watching the show. Like, okay, like this person's missing, this person's missing, but that's okay. This is still a fun show. It's still a great show. But uh, other than that, like that's for me as a kid growing up watching it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was a great time because it was one of the few times you had a Marvel TV show on. And you're just like, man, like this is good times. Like you just, like characters that you never thought you would see on TV. Yep. Yep. I, I completely agree. And it's it just amazes me. The, you know, I was obviously the sequel, this the the coming up very shortly. Uh that, that Bo, who I must add, was actually a uh guest on your show, the Infinity Equation podcast. Um so hopefully people can go back and check that out. I'll put a link down below. Um but it just this show just hits everybody in the fields, you know, the nostalgia, obviously the comic books and the, the, the merchandise. Last week, Art and I were talking about how Pizza Hut had the commemorative VHSs that they gave out with a, a poster, a card with it. Um, it was just a, a phenomenon as, as it hit. And it was the perfect time for that show for, for people around our age to, to check it out. So um, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that, Dante. Before we get into cutting up this week's episode, and again, our goal with these are to try to keep these under around 30 minutes. Last week we went a little long because I wanted to explain to everybody how the show was going to work, what the format was. But before we get to that, let's say hello to some people that are in the chat tonight who are joining us live. Hopefully they got to watch episode two like we did this week. Uh, first person popping up, we, and there's somebody going by in a very loud car. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, Eric is in the house. How you doing, Eric? What's up, sir? Lucas is Hello, here. Eric. What's going on, Lucas? 
Always good to see him here. There he is, Dante, the man, four feathers in the house. He is here. Uh, Lucas says this is going to be dope. Yeah, man. I, Dante, I'm so pumped to talk to you about this episode, man, and, and everybody else yeah. here in the group. <clears throat> episode two is hot. Yes, that's right. Some people saying hello to one another in the chat. Uh, let's see here. Eric, we have relatable figs in the house. What's going on, relatable? Thanks for being hey, here. Going on? Greatly appreciate you stopping on the live stream here. Uh, Lucas says, couldn't have picked a better guest for a premiere episode. And I would say, okay. couldn't. Okay. Th- the only thing I could have done better was to have you and Art in one show. And we're going to work on that too, Dante. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, Art, you know, look, no, you're talking about Pillar. That's Art, that, that, not me. I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Art, Art is. They broke the mold with that guy, I would say, uh, in a good way. Um, Relatable says, um, I was 10. Uh, it was 10 on Saturday mornings. Um, yeah, it was just so much fun. I actually remember running home um, from the bus stop on weekdays when it was in syndication, so mm-hmm. I can catch the, the replays on weekdays. I'd be trucking at home, little little chubby third grade me, trying to get back in time to watch it, um, trying to burn some calories. Four Thursday says yes, couldn't wait enough for a new episode of X Men when Saturdays came around. So if you're new, basically again, what we'll be doing is uh, I am going to be sharing a very professional looking. Um, Google Slides document, uh, and uh, basically Dante and I are going to go through the episode, uh, more or less in sequential order, uh, and basically just talk about the episode, uh, and just parts we really enjoyed about it, you know, uh, reflect on moments that might have occurred. This is a very emotional episode, being what happened in the plot, which will set the stage for many, many episodes in the future. Um, And one thing I wanted to point out, as I mentioned earlier, one, we're doing this because it's fun, but two, we want you to participate. You know, watch the episodes, enjoy going back down this this ride through nostalgia land with us as we build up to X-Men 97. And if you're here live, please feel free, interact in the chat. Talk, to, talk amongst yourselves, talk to us. I'm going to try to highlight as many comments as I can. Um, let us know your thoughts. Let us know how this show affected you uh, each episode by episode because participation is fun. So the more we interact, the better it is. Um, so Dante, the first thing I tend to do on the show is have a previously on X-Men segment. Okay. Figured it was appropriate. Um, yes. so last week on episode one of X-Men the Animated Series, we were left on a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, basically Jubilee got gassed about two or three times. Um, we learned about who the X-Men are, what their mission is. Uh, Jubilee very much being the point of view character meant to be us. Um, and the episode ends where the X-Men decide to infiltrate uh, a base that does have extensive files on mutants that they need to destroy. Um, it closes out with Storm's hand about to unlatch the door, Dante, and we pan to the other side, and there is a room full of dudes with guns, basically. So that is where we're picking up this week. Um, so you didn't see last week, that's about where we're at. Um, so, ripping into it, Dante, we get right back to that moment where Storm is pulling the door, and of course Wolverine with his heightened senses, says, Shh. he says, no, Dante. He says, no. He says, hold on. And I think he smells, what does he smell? Is it? Is it uh, he's like, he's, he just goes, hold it there, Gene. He's like, hold it there, Storm. I smell gun oil. Yeah, there there we a go. bunch of them on the back, back side of that door. And all you see is whoosh. And then Beast is like, I don't know. But like he was in the window, like, I don't know what's going on and how she does it. Yes. Yes. Great scene. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So Wolverine saves the day. And basically what we get here are the X-Men kicking some ass, which is yeah. something I think we all wanted to see. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So we have Storm going in there. She just gets everybody out of there. Cyclops is outside with the rest of the team, and he basically sees all these convoys pulling up in what look like almost uh, Cobra-esque, very Cobra-esque figures right here. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yo, there's trouble. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Like, I love it. Like, they just roll up out of nowhere, and then you just see a blast like, oh snap! Like, you gotta be a guard. You just be a guard and be like, oh, who, like, who just blasted the truck? Like, you know what? I'm done. These mutants can have whatever they want. I am done. At that point, I'd be out. I'd be like, they don't pay me enough yeah. to deal with this crap, right? Exactly. Probably get no insurance. No pension. Nothing. Yep. No. There's no health pay. No pension. No 401k. Nothing. They get nothing. You just like, here's kidney, a paycheck. My kid needs braces. They don't even chip in for it or anything. <laughs> Exactly. So that takes us back inside, and Morph, our good pal Morph, says, if I jinxed himself, 
It looks like clear sailing from here, Dante. Yes. I think he locked the guards up. Like, ah, this dude. But do you know what's funny? They gave him, like, it, when you look at the silhouette, it's like he had a longer coat on, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. Did he, did he morph out of it? <laughs> nah, like, it, it was like he was just, like, dressed up as, I don't know if it was, like, a colonel. I, I don't give him, I so don't ask me about ranks or anything in the army or military. I don't know any of them. I'm assuming he was dressed up as a colonel, but, the, you know, had a jacket to only go so far. But when he's like, when you see the silhouette of him, the jacket looks like it's longer. Yep. Okay. And see, and this is, this is, this is the fun part of having people on together as a group. We pick these things out. We don't notice. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, Pack Photos just joined us. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Mm, mm, mm. Another. We ain't uh, get to a more... punching yet. <laughs> Not there. We're getting there, though. All right. So right now, more thinks they're good to go. Um, Storm, there's so, so many great moments. At the end of the episode, we'll be picking our favorite quotes. It's so hard, Dante, to pick a favorite quote in these episodes because there's so many. I do have two. I have two. Okay, okay. A 1A and a 1B. Um, yes. So this is one that I personally like. It's not my favorite. But Storm is like, and, and we'll, we'll come back to this later. Storm's like, oh, no, the, the files are locked. And Wolverine brings his can over the claws and goes, ksh, ksh, unlocked. Exactly. Yeah. So, meanwhile, we jump away from them, and we get our first view of Detroit, Michigan. No, we're not at a Lions game, folks. Uh, we're going to get to see the Sentinel producing factory, where we do find out where Jubilee was taken at the end of episode one, and we have Henry Gyrick. Uh, Dante, I really felt like going through clip by clip and screenshotting this, I thought would be tedious for me. However... Mm -hmm. You notice frames and you notice different parts of the animation you never really would notice before. For instance, I really love this, how we go from uh, the zoomed-in look on Gyrick, and then we see the reflection in his glasses of Jubilee being on the table. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's very well done. Like, man, Henry Gyrick, yo, he's just like, I don't care how I get this job done. He's like, I'm going to get it done. He's yep. like, and he's like sitting there asking, he's like playing with Probably a quarter of like, like, where'd you get the recording of like Gambit saying, "It's the X Men, it's the X Men." <laughs> That's it's right. The, like, no, and no, you have it on loop too. That's the bad part. Don't mess with the X Men. Don't mess with the X Men. The X Men. Yeah. Like, you do like, you had this on loop. Like, did you just sit there and just like sit there and, like, all right, well, cut this here, cut this part here, and just loop it for this part here on this little on this tape tape cassette, like, yo. And you know now that's outdated at this point, at, for the, as the kids say, from nineteen hundreds. <laughs> it is. It is. I actually do that when I watch my YouTube videos. I just keep hearing what goes on over and over and over again. <laughs> um, so Jubilee is tied to the table. She's trying to like, get out of it. You know, why are you doing this to me? I'm only a kid. And here we have Gyrick having it out with Trask, who is the creator of the Sentinel facility and the Sentinels themselves. We jump back. Uh, to where the X-Men are uh, still trying to basically hold off those additional forces. Um, yeah. So I didn't screen grab this part, Dante, but I wanted to mention it. So I love how Storm is like, okay, Beast, you're going to go to the computer. You're going to delete all the files. I'm going to go over to Wolverine and get rid of these, right? So Beast is tapping away, working, working, working. Storm walks over and goes, oh, time's up. And she just blows up the computer. Yeah, I, I would say, they like, yo, like, I only had to work. I'm like, yo, look, this is... I don't know if that would delete all the records, but you know, like, yeah, I ain't got time for this. Just blow it up, blow yeah. everything up, just blow right. everything up. Just do that to begin with. You would have been in and out. Like, what? Exactly. She was she was complaining about the file cabinet being locked, but she just zaps the computer, just zap everything and get out of there in like two minutes. Exactly. Like, bzz, psh, storm. Okay, it's a lightning storm in here. We're done. Everything's wet. Papers are wet. Like you, nobody's going through wet, soaking papers if you just make it rain in there. The system's going to short out with the water. I'm like, like, look, who's going through files? Like, oh man, like, I, nah, I don't even go through files that are wet. I just, I don't understand it. You know, it's. I really question her ability as a team leader. Just get in there and get out of there. <laughs> Damien says, "Hey there, D Dante and disavowed, uh, and all just dropped in to say hi, quick hello." Um, Coming in from England, I believe. Love this cartoon, but wish we saw more of Black Tom and Juggernaut episodes. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. 
Juggernaut was great on the show, though, there, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. I would, you know what? If, if the X-Men are hiring, if they're watching this, um, if you need a blob, I can do the blob. Nothing can stop the blob. Yeah, let me just let me voice blob. I That's it. all I want. I got to voice the blob. <laughs> we were actually talking last week about how the arcade cabinet was based on Pride of the X-Men and not this. It's mm-hmm. a whole, yeah. whole side tangent about it. <laughs> um, all right. So, Dante, now we are seeing the X-Men. And Cyclops basically says you can't really hurt anybody. So they have the kid gloves on. A good example of that here is Rogue, I think, catches this guy in the air or something and, like, just drops him on the ground so he, like, he doesn't get too severely hurt. Um, so they're trying not to get in trouble as best they can. here. Um, so now everybody's leaving. They all ran out of the building. They're trying to get back to the Blackbird. And uh, Gambit, more or less, is, you know, running his mouth like always. And Wolverine's <laughs> a lot. What's Wolverine say? Something like, I'm missing dinner, I think he says. I think so. I, I found her. Yeah, I think he's like missing something. Yeah, I think it was something like that. He's like, well, we're gonna, let's get out of here. I'm missing dinner. Like, Wolverine with his great one liners, right? Um, yeah. And this That's what they gave really Wolverine in his like, first couple episodes is like some good one liners. They didn't, like, he didn't have too much like super like, deep t- dialogue until like later in the season, which is decent because it kind of built him up, too. Yeah. We actually said it was funny in the first episode. Um, he's not in the first episode until like 12 minutes in. Which you would think yeah. they hit you right away with him at the beginning of the episode. Um, so we do get this rather iconic image of the team mm-hmm. hustling out of there. I'm pretty sure you Google X Men the animated series. A lot of times this is the image that'll pop up. They're they're like me running from the bus stop to get home to watch after school, um, and they're trying to get back to the Blackbird. And then we get to the iconic moment, Dante, that sets the stage for how serious and dramatic of a show. This is really going to be. Morph appears at Wolverine. He sees one sentinel in the trees. Wolverine's about to throw down. Morph looks up and sees multiple sentinels. He runs. He pushes Wolverine out of the way. We get a sentinel blast. And then we get this dramatic moment, which starts the crying in the episode. I don't sense Morph anymore. Do you feel it, Professor? What is it, Gene? I don't sense Morph anymore. Neither do I, Gene. Wolverine, don't forget my cheese pizza. But uh, yeah, I don't sense it either. <laughs> <laughs> but you just hear you hear, but you hear that that Wolverine cry like Morph. Mm-hmm. Um. So as you said, the telepaths realize they feel nothing. Um. That's their way of telling us little kids watching that he just died. We get our second person crying in the episode, which is Storm. And then we get the moment that I think Pac wanted to see the most. Yes. Dante, break, break, break this scene down for us, buddy. Just, you, like, you've never seen anybody just come off. Like, you just see this happen in movies, like, great action movies, and sci-fi great action movies as well. Like, you just see that one that one guy on the team just, like, who's just, like, gun ho about that one person, that other person on the team that they just lost, and they go punch the leader. Like, yo, what'd you leave him for? Why'd you do that? I had to make a decision. No, you didn't. You could have went back from, and they, they make every excuse like, "Yeah, we could have, but we all wouldn't have made it back." I'm just saying right now, but you know, hey, at least we, some of us made it back. We lost one. I call that a good day. I mean, I even like let's say it like this: with the Transformers, every almost every Transformer made it back. And if you ever seen Robot Chicken? He's like, we lo- we only killed like 16 humans today. That's a new record. So, I mean, you lost one mutant. I mean, just like, yo. Uh, yeah, that is true. If it's, it's violent, yo, if he would have blasted Wolverine, yo, man, if they could have got away with what we could see now on TV, it would have been great. You just see like Wolverine like half blasted away. Yeah. You see his rib cage. Then just like start healing all up. Oh, my God. Oh my goodness, that would have been awesome. Then you would get a classic, now it's my turn kind of line, right? Right. Uh, so what I really liked about him punching him in the stomach, last week they established the fact that Wolverine does not take to authority well. He's a bit of a loner, as we all know. And I really enjoyed this scene after he punches it because Gene comes over, and I really like this top picture uh, in the upper left section the most because we're getting... We don't know there's going to be a love triangle here. And here... Yeah. 
we get this great image of the three of, of the two of them on one side looking at Gene. And at this point, we don't even know Gene is a couple with Cyclops, I don't believe. And we discover, of course, that she's in a relationship with Cyclops based on their, their movement here. And she has to basically calm Wolverine down. But I just thought Dante seeing the triangle of them here was definite foreshadowing of what their love life is going to be like in the future. What kills me about this is like the way Jean touches Wolverine. Like she gives him like that, that, like yeah, like I, I feel you, I, like I'm feeling you. But then she just runs to the like Wolverine's like Gary Comfort, and then she runs to the arms of Cyclops. Say, so, so but he's my arms. To, he got the arms to wrap around me. You're like, well, dang it, woman! Like yo, stop leading me on. <laughs> like she could have touched him on the shoulder. She she reached for the chest. She's like, Wolverine, it's not Cyclops' fault. <laughs> Oh, we lost more. He's like, uh, oh, 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 so, so, oh, so you ain't going? To, okay, okay. Then that's what I would get mad too. I walk away and give and give this man a convertible as well. Yeah, that's one of the. And we're getting to that. That's uh, another. I, that might be my my moment of the episode. We'll see. Um, there it is. <laughs> yep. Hey, Genie, tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. Yeah. I would be mad. I'd be like, you really did. You did me a favor, so I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gotta put a roof on in there now. <laughs> got no side mirrors, but it kills me how the side mirrors are attached. <laughs> yeah, right? what's, what's, what's the who designed this thing, right? <laughs> I just noticed that like the side mirrors are attached to the window. <laughs> you can't see there. So he well, cut deep know. enough where he's like, you ain't gonna be able to get in the car either, but you ain't gonna have the side mirrors either. So yeah, so there we go. So he does a number on the car. Wolverine leaves. He leaves like every episode and comes back. So you know he's going to come back. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we get Gene with a very emotional. It's not his fault, Wolverine. It's not yours either. Exactly. Thank and we get another person crying. So now we do get a flashback. So we didn't actually see what happened. They show the beam hitting Morph. And then we jump to the Blackbird, right? So right. here, Dante, we're getting the flashback. And we're seeing that not only was Morph uh, gravely injured and, and killed, but they have captured Beast. And we see the Beast runs the moor. He gets blasted into an electric fence. And it always skeezes me out how it shows him getting electrified here. I definitely think that that's... Yeah, like, that's crazy, right? It's like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yo you, I'm sorry. Like, I, I know we're trying to be serious. But now I'm, like, looking at back at some of this stuff. Like, you know that fur had to be smelling. You're not wrong, man. Fur cat. Fried fur. Yeah, like you know, like fried fur. Like like you have he should have patches like missing on the back of him, like where <laughs> like, like, like fur just fried off. It's just like the cat in Christmas vacation that gets zapped by the Exactly. Right? He's he had nine lives, but he sure spent them all. <laughs> I, I, I love Pac's comment here, Dante. Um next has lap, detachable convertible. <laughs> Yo. Hook me up. I will take it. Um, so earlier, the X-Men were kicking ass. Now they're getting their asses kicked. So we yep. had more killed, Beast blasted, Rogue gets blasted, Wolverine's getting swung around by by the, by the Sentinel. Yeah. He's just getting whipped around. He goes through the woods. Now here, Dante, I had to put this here. This is like the freaking, the, one of the top two most iconic moments of Cyclops. I love when he gets down on his hands and shoots the beam. Or when he just like yeah. shoots straight up in the air like on the wizard cover. Yeah. So we get the tactical Cyclops position that I really like here. So he and Storm are really trying to fend off the Sentinels. Um, it's not working. And Cyclops is like, yo, we got to go. We got to get the hell out of here. All right? Not without Morphin Beast. <sighs> so um, we see here that Rogue has to basically siphon off some of Wolverine's uh, energy to prevent him from going back and essentially probably getting himself killed or captured. Yeah. And then Dante, we of course get Wolverine coming back from the flashback. I will avenge you, my friend. Very stoic. Yeah, it it was like Wolverine. Like once you get into like late, like I said, later episodes of the season, and then next season, like getting start learning more about Wolverine. Like that, you just like you feel sorry for him. He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm always a swar like I'm always a killer. Uh, let's see. He here. always treat me like one. 
Damien says, uh, what did you think of the Savage Land episodes with Sauron? I wonder if it would work well for a film adaptation. Um, plus, call me crazy. I'd love an x Men Murder World movie. So I would dig that. Um, that would be great with Dr. Yeah. Arcade. <sighs> and, and we're, and we're going we're gonna to get to uh, those Savage Land episodes in season two. But I love them. I mean, as a kid, we all love dinosaurs for the most part. Yeah. So dinosaurs, X Men. It's it's how I almost justify buying Jurassic Park figures for my X Men shelf sometimes. Yeah. I don't, I like the Savage Land. It was just. It was, I think that for me that storyline was a little dragged out. But as a kid looking, you know, as a kid watching, it was a little dragged out for me. But now as an adult watching, it, like it, it was some good episodes. It was good writing. Yep, I agree. Um. And we got to see Professor X walk, which was cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's faking the whole time. <laughs> Eric says, what's up, RG? Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely uh, more people crying here. So here we get uh, Beast also crying. So it's like our fourth person. And like, and again, we're kids watching this. One of the main characters that we probably all like because he did the shape-shifting. He's dead. All these characters are crying for the entire episode. And like 10-year-old us are like, what the hell is going on, Dante? Well, you know what's funny about this ep- this scene too. Like Henry Geyer comes in there to like do to like talk to Beast. He's like, no, he's like, I, I just he's like leave me alone. And Henry Geyer just walks out like, okay, cool. You're mourning over your friend. I'm gonna let you leave you alone for hot. Like, what villain do you know does that? Like, yo. Yep. All right. Man. If he was real villain, he'd be like, you know what? Get him down. We're gonna go ahead and do some tests. Like, I don't, I ain't got time for this. His hair, his, his fur already smells. Let's zap him some more, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so here we get the president of the United States, which is a cameo. We'll talk about it at the end as well. But she essentially is talking about what happened with the X-Men. And um, that will later on lead to another scene where we find out that she's having uh, reservations about having the Sentinels and why the X-Men attack. So we find Wolverine and Dante, perhaps one of my favorite moments of this episode, is when that guy opens his mouth because he sounds just like, for some reason, Christian Slater. Yeah. <laughs> did they? Did this, did this guy like go to like voice act for this episode? And they're like, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna try to sound like Christian Slater as best I can. He's like, hey, I can't even do it. Can you do a Christian Slater voice? I can't even do it. Uh, he's like, uh, <clears throat> let me see if I can do it. He's like, what you doing in here, man? You look like you got. Look at you, four eyes. You wouldn't hit a guy with glasses. Well, let's see what's underneath him. I'll put him back on, man. Put him back on. He's a mutant too. I love that, like random, like that random stuff. Like they, people shout up, like he's a mutant. But you hear that one guy in the background, like no duh, like he just shot up the whole table. Like he's a mutant. Okay, cool. I love it, and, and he lets him flip the glasses. Would you think he would have stopped him? But. Um, hey, Payne's Toys Samples. What's going on, man? How are you, buddy? Thanks for stopping by tonight. Um, all right, so Wolverine, of course, is drinking and brooding. He's about to get into a fight. Cyclops comes in, and Cyclops is like, yo, Wolverine, I, I don't make apologies for command decisions. However, would you like to get revenge against the Sentinels? And Wolverine's like, hell yeah, let's smash some effing robots, right? Yep. All right, so working our way through, this is the moment we get to, Dante, where... Uh, Guy Rick is called to see the president. Uh, she essentially says, um, did the X-Men have a good reason to do this? Maybe we shouldn't be building giant robots who are going to kill them. She has a no. point, right? Yeah. Yeah, she does. So she has a good point there. Um, so he's pissed off because he more or less has been told he's getting shut down. He had a whole sort of ambition, obviously, going on, which we'll learn more about in future episodes. Um, okay, Figure says, "Have you guys seen the leaked artwork for X Men '90s? No. Have you, have you, Dante? I have not. Mm-mm, no, I haven't. I, I've tried to stay away from everything that's X Men '97 related until I can say more about it. I that's agree. I I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, man. All right, so we jump back to Jubilee's parents' house, foster parents or whatever, and Cyclops is there, and basically this is the X Men setting a trap." So Cyclops goes there, counting on the fact a Sentinel would show up, and their plan is to follow the Sentinel back to their uh, their actual base. 
So mm-hmm. Blackbird's ready, Dante. Dante, do we need a Blackbird in our toy collection? Oh, um, we, we, we don't have the space for a Blackbird. Hey, I'm, I'm the guy that complains about space, man. Come on now. We don't. I mean, we do, but no, like, unless you have, unless your name is Art G and got a 14 room mansion <laughs> and a garage. Then yeah, I mean you can have the space for it, but unfortunately, like space is very limited. Trying to get a blackbird. Uh, so we jump back to Jubilee. Uh, there is a short uh, on her, you know, restraints. She gets out. Cyclops and Gambit are the first on the scene. Uh, so they follow back to get to Jubilee, and now we're back to seeing the X Men kick some more ass. So we have Storm powering up. We have Wolverine in the back of a Sentinel. They basically obliterate the Sentinels and. We get to the end, and we have Rogue, and Rogue's line, Dante. Isn't that? An, isn't this enough? Yeah, yeah, that is. Not when I'm. Uh, I'll save that to the end. I'm going to say that to the end. Save it to the end. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh-huh. So uh, we we close out here at the end of the episode, where Jubilee makes the decision to join the X Men, which makes sense because she's our point of view character. Um, so she does leave her foster parents to live in the X mansion. We get Cyclops and Jean again, having a moment at the end where they're essentially talking about what happened and Cyclops is brooding whether or not he made the right decision or not. Um, and then we close out the end of episode two with a very heartwarming moment after all the emotion over Morph's death, where his place is taken over by Julie on the team. And we end with a very heartfelt moment where we see the X mansion and that's it. We close out the episode, ending the first two episode run of the show. Dante. Yeah. Uh, see, unlike a lot of people, I was not down for Jubilee. I'm like, yo, who is this chick who's messing up my show? Like, she's <laughs> whining and crying every five minutes. Like, oh my goodness, what was this? What was this? But now she, like, she started growing on me. Jubilee has started growing on me. Yes, I, I agree. And then, and then she was a vampire. For reasons yeah <laughs> not on the show um some people are telling me to open my damn galactus i'm getting mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. getting to it um damien added jubilee feel he feels that she's an underrated character but she makes a damn cool figure um yeah so our only cameo and this show has a lot of cameos typically if you count this as a cameo was the president because we know that in the future she's going to have somebody running against her politically um, but Dante, that brings us to our favorite parts of the episode, sir. So, as the guest, let's all we'll alternate these one by one. So we'll go through an alternate. Okay. But uh, I'll let you go first each time, Dante. So, who is your favorite character in the episode? Oh man, um, I'm going to say like, uh, it's this is going to be wild. This is going to be wild. It's Henry Guyrick. Cause that man looks so cool in his glasses. Like I don't know how he's seen through them, but I like Eric. Like he still respected like the wishes of Beast because he lost a comrade, but he was still evil enough. Of, like yo, we still gonna continue to be making these Sentinels now. I like it. I like it. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll go a little bit controversial here as well. I'm gonna go with my favorite character as the Sentinels themselves. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You know yeah. they very much were the. The, the, the main linchpin of his first two episodes as far mm-hmm. as the face of the enemy. And uh, as we all have our Sentinels, you have an entire Sentinel family over there, Dante. Uh, somewhat. somewhat. <laughs> you have the whole, all the kids. <laughs> the kids. Um, but I'll go with the Sentinels. Um, how about a favorite quote, Dante? You said you had two, right? Yes. So, first quote was uh, Rogue in the beginning. She was like, Look as nervous like a cat in a room full of uh, rocking chairs. Like you can't get no better than that. Like come on now, yep. come on. Like that's it right there. And then and, and everybody's second is, is is always, you know, tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. That that was that that right there. Those two lines right there. Ugh. Good choices. Give me there. goosebumps. Good choices. Uh, real quick, Lucas mentioned how in episode one Domino was a ca- was a cameo. I missed it, but Art G caught it. So Art G did mention that on air last week. I, he had to tell me, though. I missed it. Um, my, oh, favorite quote, I watch that. <laughs> my favorite quote... 
my favorite quote's going to have to be, as sad as it is, because a lot of foreshadowing was Morph saying, it's clear sailing from here until you're shot and you're dead. But not quite dead, which we'll get to later, right? Yeah, right. Um, all right, Dante, what was your favorite moment in the episode? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I think it's like when they actually go back and find like where Jubilee's being held, and it's just like them being X Men. Like, yo, we're gonna take some revenge. Like, this is it. We're done. Like, we're we're, we're taking revenge. I like it. Um, I'm gonna go with as much as I want it to be Wolverine punching Cyclops in the stomach. Um, <laughs> because I never noticed the imagery taking place in that frame when they mm-hmm. do have, as I mentioned earlier, that love triangle of, of Gene facing Cyclops and Wolverine, because we know that throughout the entire series until the very end, that that's obviously a major plot point. So I, I really like that moment in the episode for sure. Yeah, that, that is a good, that is a good, that's a good one. I didn't ain't, I ain't think about that one, but yeah. All right, Dante. So bringing us to our final overall thoughts on the entire episode two. So, I mean, obviously this is tying together the cliffhanger from the previous episode. Um, it's very much setting the stage for what this show was going to be like moving forward, being one of the first episodic cartoons that kids are going to watch. Um, what were your overall thoughts on this episode overall, Dante? Uh, it, it's a good beginning. Like It shows you everybody that you need to know uh, and introduce you to the characters you'll see further on in the, that season. And if you weren't like an X-Men, like you didn't know who the X-Men were, now you know who they are. Like you know, kind of like what their power base is. Like they gave a good explaining of what Rogue's power base is. Like um, they really didn't. I don't know if they. I can't remember if they did talk about like Gambit. Like what his is like kinetic energy. If they said that in, like the first episode or this, or this episode, I can't. I don't think they did say in this episode. But like you know, they said Storm is basically what her name is. It's like Storm, Cyclops, Jean Grey. You know. Beast is what he is. More, they all and it showed their power sets in the first episode, but this was like kind of explaining a little bit more of everybody else's power sets that they didn't really get a chance to go through. Yeah, yeah, very well put. And I agree. I mean, the the main goal. This was essentially the, the pilot, right? And it's just cut into two parts, right? So yep. the the point of the, these first two episodes was to hook the audience. It was to get them invested. And it did that. It, it, you just mentioned they do a great job spending time, just enough time with every character for you to actually invest in them. Um, Jubilee is introduced to the audience. So, you know, it's not just aimed necessarily at, at a male demographic. They have Jubilee there as well to form the female demographic of kids. Um, and overall, they did a lot of foreshadowing and they laid out a, a lot of um, basically um, breadcrumbs of what was going to happen in future episodes. They obviously mention they're moving the Sentinel facility. We have the president disagreeing with Guy Rick. We have the tease of what's going to happen to Beast. You know, the show ends in an happy manner, but Beast is still a, a prisoner. So that's obviously a thread that takes place all the way, I think until the finale of the, of the season, actually, until he gets yeah. out. Um, I believe that, isn't it a fact, Dante, that Beast originally wasn't supposed to be on the show that much? And they, like, increased his uh. use on the show? I can't remember if it was him or if it was Morph. I, I can't remember which one it was. I know that they, they definitely, like, paid attention to the audience, and they were like, hey, like, if they like this, we're going to continue to do it and bring that person no. back. Well, remember, they just thought it was going to be one season, one and done season. Okay, that was right. it. And then they just kept getting renewed, right? Yep. That day they came back, they were like, oh, it's getting renewed. All right, well, let's do it on season two. Excellent. Um, all right, everybody. So that's going to wrap up episode two of X-Files. Um, before we get out of here for the night, I just want to take an opportunity for uh, Dante uh, to share with the audience um, who's watching here live or watching on the playback. You know, Dante, where can they find you? What are your socials? And, you know, what are your upcoming projects you're working on? Uh, you can find me under, always under Dark Jokers in on Instagram and Twitter. You can uh, find also, find me on uh, Finney Equation Facebook page, group page. You can also find me on the in- Infinite Equation on Twitter. Uh, cause I'm sorry, I'm not looking because I got to remember all this in my head because I forget what I have this stuff. 
uh, the Infinity Equation on Instagram. Uh, and you can also join the Discord, uh, the Infinity Equation Discord, which, um, you know, is kept up to date. Like I tell you, like, Jason Lopez keeps everybody up to date on there. If you haven't been on there and seen that he keeps it up to date, he keeps it up to date. Like, no lie. This man is on point. Uh, yeah, so. But other than that, um, Friday will be live. Um, and then we'll have, um, shoot, uh, Matthew and Jay Shot will be joining me as special guest hosts as we have a special guest, uh, Darth Dandada, who will be joining us. Plus, uh, it's the start of the toy photography contest again. So, uh, other than that, uh, oh, um, and then Sunday is IE Creators. Hold on, because I forget. <laughs> it's bad. I forget who the guest is. <laughs> you're, you're going through a lot. You have a lot, a lot of projects going on. It's hard to keep it all straight sometimes. Yeah. I, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Hot Fuzz Customs will be joining us on IE Creators. What time is that on? So, that is 3 o'clock on Sunday. 8 o'clock on Friday, 3 o'clock on Sunday. Excellent. Um, and again, uh, for transparency purposes, for everybody who's new, uh, Dante is uh, kindly enough to have me on as a weekly co-host on the Infinity Equation podcast. Um, unfortunately, this Friday, tomorrow, I'll not be able to be on. I am puppy sitting um, with Bruno. If you know, then you know. Um, so I will not be on tomorrow. Dante, I do have to press you a tomorrow. little bit. Uh, sorry, a Friday. Sorry, You're Friday. throwing me, oh, I was scared. Friday, Friday, scared. Like, tomorrow's Friday. Like, oh, no, shoot. Like, uh, on Friday. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Dante, I'm going to press you some real quick here because I know you're, yes. you're, 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 you're somebody who's very modest. Um, please tell the audience where they can find some of the interviews that you've done on the Infinity Equation podcast right. with some of the different voice actors uh, and also future current writers of the show. Uh, see, I don't know episodes offhand because, like I said, everything is like a blur after a while. Just, just, just tell us who we had on. Yeah. Uh, so we've had on uh, the Lee Waltz, uh, Larry Houston. Uh, we've had on Cal Dodd. Uh, we've had on Bo DeMeo, who's doing X Men '97. Um, be on the lookout for more information this year regarding some more X Men '97 information too. So that's all I, that's all I can say at the moment for that awesome. but uh yeah we've had almost every yeah writers directors and one of the voice actors from x-men so yeah That's incredible. from so, old generation to the new generation so yeah, yeah. So we've covered both <laughs> check out the infinity equation podcast you know go to their youtube page scroll yourself down some amazing interviews i i was just a, a viewer i got to know dante for being a viewer on the show um, and I was watching those Cal Dodd episodes and Larry Houston episodes and Lee Walds and, you know, it was so cool. Such great interaction. They were very gracious with their time and answering questions. And, and Bo, obviously Bo as well, the showrunner for, for X-Men 97. So do yourself a favor. Go watch those if you're a, a fan of X-Men the series. It's a great watch. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, as you know, I toy reviews, toy hunts, all that good stuff, everybody. I just toy reviewed these right here recently. I got them in early from Big Bad Toy Store. I rarely, rarely get things, you know, like at the, the early shipment of something. So, they sent it to the wrong house. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. supposed to go to Art's house, actually. I, I actually stole from Art's porch. Don't tell him I said that. Um, if you want to see my review on uh, the Skrull 2-pack, Queen Granky uh, and Super Skrull, check that out on This About Action Figures. Uh, also, new toy hunt coming uh, probably tomorrow night. We'll have a new toy hunt out. Um, but other than that, uh, Dante. Sir, it's always a pleasure getting to talk with you. I, I'm glad it worked out that you can come on tonight because I would not have gotten my Dante fix since I'm not going to be on <laughs> Nobody wants that fix. <laughs> oh, you know, actually, I did forget. Um, tomorrow, I'll just, I want to try something new. I'm going to do a live review of this Hades figure. So we'll see how that goes. Um, if it goes good, uh, it'll, it's not going to be long. It's going to be short. So um just do a live review because i'm not good at doing like regular reviews so we'll see how a live review goes that's awesome guys so check that out and that's that's also on the Infinity equation podcast uh channel yes yes all right. check that out folks i know i'll want to check it out um but other than that dante everybody thanks for watching tonight if you're new please consider hitting that subscribe button it's free for you doesn't cost you anything 
helps us grow the channel tremendously. And right now is what I normally say on our march to 4,000 subscribers. But I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to everybody who watches these videos. I always want to wait so I get a little past it. And we're sitting at about 4,020 right now. So I, I feel secure saying it now. Thank you for helping us get the 4,000 subscribers. I love doing these videos, obviously live streams now, toy hunts, everything else. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it's the long march to 5,000 subs. Um, so go Congrats. ahead, hit that bell for notifications. The way YouTube actually notifies you and tells you when we post new content on the channel, like our weekly toy hunts, reviews, and live streams. Leave a comment down below, hit that like button. And for daily toy content and daily toy updates, try checking us out over Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Hey, Dante. If you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three P's of the toy hunt. Patience, persistence, most of all, politeness. Take care, stay healthy. And Dante, we'll be seeing all of them at the pegs. At the pegs, yes, there it is. He said the lie, he said the lie. Hey guys, thank you very much. And please follow Dante and the Infinity Equation Podcast. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you on Friday and tomorrow on Dante's uh, opening. Happy AAP.